In this video, we are going to discuss the J1962 diagnostic connector and diagnosing fault codes. The ECU or engine control unit is also known as the PCM or powertrain control module and amongst some of the local South African marketers as the lock set. Any ECU or PCM has a built-in diagnostic function that can provide information about the vehicle it's connected to. The ECU will run self-tests on its sensors and actuators to determine if they are performing within predetermined parameters. If a system fault occurs, the ECU may operate in an alternative strategy to allow the vehicle to continue running but with reduced efficiency. This will differ from one manufacturer to the next. The fault will generate a diagnostic trouble code which will be stored in the ECU memory. These fault codes cannot be erased by disconnecting the battery because the type of memory used is called non-volatile memory. These codes can only be accessed and cleared with a diagnostic tester or diagnostic scan tool. These can be made by independent brands or the vehicle manufacturer. Fault codes will be either two, three or four digits long and can pinpoint various issues. In-depth fault finding must be done with a multimeter. The diagnostic connector. Diagnostic connectors have been used since the 1970s and became the standard in the 90s. From 1999, it became law for all vehicle manufacturers to use the J1962 connector. On the early version of the system, there were only a few sensors that could be monitored. As technology advanced, so did the number of sensors with OBD2. Soon the European and American manufacturers will use their own systems. The Europeans started using EOBD, which became Euro 1, Euro 2, and Euro 3, and so on. The first systems only had two-digit fault codes. From 1995, three-digit codes were introduced. And from 2000, Euro 3 units used the ISO system that could display four-digit fault codes. And the powertrain could display P1 and P0 fault codes, which became the standard for all manufacturers. From Euro 3 onwards, the OBD warning light located in the instrument cluster also became standard. Some of the Euro 2 vehicles can also display four-digit codes. The diagnostic connector socket is located in different places depending on the manufacturer. But for Bantam Fiesta or Icon, it will be located on the left-hand side A pillar under the dash. The pin allocation may differ depending on manufacturer, but certain pins will be universal. I will put this list in the description. Two quick side notes. On the Euro 1 system, the Bantam Fiesta and Icon Diagnostics is done through the K line and the keyword protocol is 71. If there is no communication, use VW's MP9 login. For the 2008 to 2012 Euro 2 Bantams, the system keyword protocol is 2000 and is on the CAN system. Fault codes. Once you have run the diagnostic test and you have found that there are fault codes, test to see if the sensor is working. Test a wiring harness for an open circuit or a short circuit to ground. Once you have fixed the issue, clear the fault code which can only be done with the diagnostic tester or scan tool. EOBD. When the ignition is turned on, the ECU continuously checks its inputs and outputs for discontinuity, short circuits and various faulty sensors or actuators. The sensors and actuators can also be checked for plausibility, for example illogical combinations or signals. Control systems which affect emissions are also monitored and can be checked. MIL and non-MIL DTCs. An MIL or malfunction indicator lamp DTC is a fault which affects emissions and causes the MIL on the cluster to light up, whereas a non-MIL DTC is a fault that does not affect emissions. 
I've created a PDF for the full European onboard diagnostics, the EC1 to EC4 and their various sensors. The link is in the description. How to pinpoint tests. When you have run a self-test and the DTC pops up, some manufacturers will tell you exactly what is wrong. If not, you can simply Google the code, for example, DTC P0116. Let's say you have run the self-test and the code P0116 does pop up. This means that the engine coolant sensor is out of range. Perform a continuity check on that specific circuit and the calibration of the sensor. Number one, measure the reference voltage from the ECU. This is done using a good quality ohmmeter and voltmeter. Number two, perform a continuity test of the wiring loom signal line with the ECU disconnected. Number three, perform a continuity test of the wiring loom return line with the ECU disconnected. Number four, test the resistance of the sensor. After all four tests, any problem in the circuit or sensor can be clearly identified and fixed. We will go into more detail with this on another video. Please like and subscribe. Keep on the lookout for more upcoming videos.